This is Pre-Calc 11, Chapter 1.5. This time we're going to look at graphing geometric sequences and series. And you should start by experimenting with the parameters suggested in the construct understanding. And you want to try hard to look for the patterns. If you're stuck, then continue with this video. Okay, first we're going to learn how to graph with a TI calculator. So, to make sure that everything's plotting correctly, you need to click on mode first. Make sure that we have sequence and dot set. Next, you'll need to press Y equals, and you'll need to enter your function. So this is the function. You just enter five times bracket. It's important to use the negative sign. This is the minus sign. The minus sign needs a number on the left and right. The negative sign only needs the number on the right. And if you have errors involving these two, just swap the one that you're using. Raised to the power is this symbol, the caret, n minus 1. This says x, t, theta, and n. So it's context sensitive. It'll know to put an n when it needs to. And that's it. And just so that you know, this is what we're entering here is Tn equals 5 times 1 half to the power of n minus 1. Sorry, that's a minus. Okay, next, you need to set your window. And just scroll down to whatever you need to set. Here are the important values. You need 1 to 10, you need 0 to 10, and negative 3 to 6. And then when you hit graph, And I got an error because I missed a bracket. So if you're inserting, it'll look like a flashing underscore. Um, if you're overwriting, it'll be the flashing square. Okay, now we have bracket n minus 1, and we hit graph, and everything's fine. I can take a copy of this graph, paste it in here. And you'll want to notice the dots. Now, with the Casio calculators, you need a little bit more work, but it's manageable. So let's load up the Casio calculator. And we need to go into math mode. And that's one. You need to fill the list because the Casio will plot a list. And you'll need the sequence function, and you can go to that with the catalog. And to get to S, you just press the times and just scroll down. And press EXE, execute. Okay, and then five times and bracket, and again use the negative sign, negative 0.5, raised to the power of x minus 1, and the comma is right below the cosine, x comma 1, comma 10, comma 1, bracket, and then this is the store button, so we're going to store it into list, Shift 1, and we're going to store it in the list 2. Execute. We need to generate another sequence. And it's just x, comma, x, comma, 1, comma, 10, comma, 1. And we're going to store that into list 1. Execute. 
Okay, if we go into stat mode, that's two. You'll see the list there. So list one will be our x-axis, list two will be our y-axis. And we just need to press graph, and we're going to press set. And all we want to do is verify that these are set correctly. So you want to make sure that these are set correctly. Now we press execute, and we just hit graph one. Okay, and we can see our plot values. And you can see that they approach zero. And if you don't have a graphing calculator, you can use desmos.com. So just type in desmos.com, click on launch calculator. And this just plots any function, but we want a table. So we're going to do a table. And we're just going to enter a function for this table rather than values. Highlight that. And then just going to do five times bracket negative negative point five raised to the power of and bracket x one minus one. And close bracket, and it's done. We get our table of values here. And if we scroll over to here, we can see our values. And if you want more values, Just press enter and it'll give you more values and you can see the values show up there. Okay, and when you're doing this, please make sure that you find the observations below. If R is greater than one, the sequence is increasing. And if it's between zero and one, the sequence is decreasing. And if the ratio is between negative one and zero, the sequence is oscillating towards zero. And this is the case here. It's oscillating above and below the x-axis, and it's going towards zero. If r is less than negative one, the sequence is oscillating away from zero. So basically, this graph is going to be flipped. So it's going to start like this and then go like that. So it's flipped horizontally. Part C, if the absolute value of R is greater than one, the series is increasing faster. Okay, remember that's a sum. And if R, the absolute value of R is less than one, the series is increasing slower. And it's increasing slower towards a horizontal asymptote. So that doesn't mean the x-axis, it means a horizontal asymptote. 
So it'll look something like that. And that completes this lesson.